Former House Speaker Larry Householder takes the stand as he faces federal racketeering charges in a $61 million bribery scheme. This is the first opportunity I've had in two and a half years to talk, so I can't wait. It's going to be a great day. The evidence the prosecution says contradicts Householder's direct testimony. I'm the one challenging the status quo. I am not the establishment favor. A power struggle among House Republicans in Ohio between Speaker Jason Stevens and Representative Derek Marin. We have considerable influence on which bills pass and you know what we're willing to vote for. How a group of conservative lawmakers is hoping to influence the House agenda this session. And a bill that would overhaul the Ohio Department of Education one step closer to becoming law. The new cabinet level agency it would create and why opponents say it's taking away the will of the voters. The longest running political show in central Ohio starts now. This is NBC4's The Spectrum with Colleen Marshall. Well, I know I'm telling the truth. That's what I know. Former Ohio House Speaker Larry Householder takes the stand in his own defense, but did he convince the federal jury he's not guilty of corruption charges he's facing, or did prosecutors successfully use his own words against him? Welcome to The Spectrum. I'm Colleen Marshall. There's never been a bribery trial quite like it. Householder and the former chair of Ohio's Republican Party, Matt Borges, accused of masterminding a $61 million scheme to push through a billion dollar bailout of two nuclear power plants. First Energy already admitted that it paid millions to ensure Householder got the speakership and state lawmakers would push through that bailout. But did Householder convince the jury his role in all of this was legal and above board? When he took the stand, Natalie Fahmy was there. After both the defense and prosecution rested their cases on Thursday afternoon, former Speaker of the House Larry Householder said he thinks things went well. That's after the prosecution cross-examined him, reminding him multiple times that he is under oath. There are no cameras or cell phones allowed in court, so you will not be able to see or hear testimony from the former speaker, who's being accused of racketeering in a multi-million dollar bribery scheme to pass energy bailout legislation called House Bill 6. Yesterday, Householder testified that he never went to a dinner where many of the pay-to-play talks allegedly happened with First Energy players during a 2017 Washington, D.C. trip. He also testified that he did not see former First Energy CEO on that trip, but photos, call logs, and hotel reservations suggest Householder's testimony was not entirely accurate. Once the defense rested, the prosecution called back to the stand Special Agent Blaine Wetzel as rebuttal to tie up their case. Then they rested as well. On Tuesday, we'll hear closing arguments from both the prosecution and the defense. Then the jury will go into deliberation. In Cincinnati, I'm Natalie Fahmy reporting. Larry Householder, a Republican, became Speaker of the House after striking a deal with Democrats, offering to support some of their agenda items in return for their votes. Well, the same thing happened this year. Republican Jason Stevens was elected Speaker with the votes of all 32 House Democrats and just 22 members of his own party. The majority of Republicans, 43 of them, voted for Representative Derek Marin. But even though he is not Speaker, Marin claims to be the leader of the Republican caucus, setting up a GOP power struggle. I sat down with Marin this week. Well, Colleen, two-thirds of the House Republicans voted for me to be Speaker. Uh, we've had an additional election after that to still recognize me as the leader of the House Republicans. So myself and my co our colleagues are doing everything we can to push a Republican conservative agenda in the House and move Ohio forward in this uh, difficult time. So. Well, it's one thing to say they voted for me to be the leader of the caucus. You're not the Speaker. The Speaker is elected by a majority of House members, and that is Mr. Mr. Stevens. So shouldn't he be make, calling the shots? Shouldn't he be talking about what the agenda is because he got the most votes? Well, he definitely is the speaker uh, with Democrat, uh, unanimous Democrat support. So, you know, the Democrats are, have a, are very powerful right now in the House and they're in many ways setting the agenda. Um, I'm a Republican. Uh, the Republicans hold two third majority of the House and I think the Republicans um, should be setting the agenda and that's what I'm trying uh, to do. What part of the agenda have the Democrats set? 
Well, the main thing is um, the issue of putting the constitutional amendment on the ballot. Um, I believe our constitution shouldn't be just willy-nilly changed. Marin is one of the Republicans pushing for a ballot proposal that would require 60 percent voter approval for a constitutional amendment instead of the current simple majority. If, you know, six out of ten Ohioans can't agree on something, I don't think that should necessarily go in the Constitution. Uh, and, and Stevens and the Democrats have blocked that amendment, and now we're going to have an, uh, a good number of initiatives to try to in, in, uh, enshrine all types of left-wing uh, issues into the Constitution. So they want to try to buy their way onto the ballot and, you know, run, you know, tens and tens of millions of dollars worth of TV ads and on complicated issues and a lot of times try to confuse people. And, you know, we have a legislature for a reason and Democrats and Republicans work very hard to make sure we get the issue right. And that's where the vast majority of policy needs to be made. Well, let's take the issue of abortion as an example. Ohio has one of the most restrictive abortion laws in the country with the heartbeat bill. That was passed by the legislature. Poll after poll after poll shows Ohio voters don't want that. That the majority of Ohio, I think it usually comes out to be about 57 or 58 percent of Ohioans prefer the restrictions that were put in place under Roe v. Wade. So shouldn't the voters have a say in that if they think that what you are doing is too conservative and not the will of the people? Well, I think it all depends kind of land on how you ask the question. I think the heartbeat bill, when properly explained to folks, um, the majority of Ohioans do support it. Maybe it may be maybe it may be narrowly it may be narrowly, um, but uh, you know when a, when a baby's heartbeat is beating, and that baby can feel pain. Um, I think most Ohioans realize that that life needs to be protected. If you believe the majority of Ohioans support the heartbeat bill, though, why not let Ohioans decide? Well, they have decided. They, they, elected, they elected representatives that have made the law. Uh, we all stood for election. Marin rejects criticism that Ohio's supermajority Republicans were elected because of gerrymandered districts, because every major statewide office holder, including the governor, is Republican. He says he's focused on conservative policy solutions, protecting the Constitution, supporting a flat 2.5 percent income tax, and his newly proposed ethics bill. It's interesting to hear that you are pushing this ethics reform at the same time we're watching Larry Householder be on trial down in Cincinnati. The FBI, at the beginning of their investigation, uh, the day about the time they indicted Householder, identified Ohio was the most corrupt state house in the country, that this was a pay-to-play system. Well, I think we need to have leaders that want ethics reform. Uh, we need leaders that are, going, that are going to challenge the status quo, and that's who I am. And I worked very hard to become Speaker of the House, and a lot of the, a lot of the people uh, that are mentioned in this trial worked very hard against me to stop me. And there's a reason they worked hard against me, because they know that I can't be controlled and I work for the people. Weren't you one of the people who took money from friends of Larry Householder, though? I did. I did. I, I, Larry supported me like he supported, I don't know, maybe 30 different, 30 different candidates. And um, yes. Householder gave $7,700 to the Derek Marin campaign. Marin says that accounts for a small fraction of the four to $500,000 he raised. So, you, you know, that was before, you know, all of this, all of this happened. I voted to remove Larry Householder as Speaker of the House. Um, you know, in, in politics, in the legislature, you get around a lot of a pe people and you associate with a lot of people. Um, but I'm certainly not accountable for, uh, you, know, you know, his actions or anyone else's that have potentially done something. You did vote to make him Speaker and you voted for House Bill 6. Do you regret that vote or do you defend that vote? Well, House Bill Six was an interesting bill. In in, in my in my area, it was it was supposed to lower uh, taxes, uh, lower energy costs on bills about six or seven dollars. Uh, but I'm not happy about the bill because it was uh, influenced wrongly, and I think it uh, bailed out. It it gave way too much money uh, to public utilities companies, and it was and that was wrong. You did vote in favor of House Bill Six. I did, yes. Yeah. It's on the record. So yeah, it's on the record. You voted for it. Yeah. And and I thought you voted to keep Larry Householder in office even after the scandal emerged. Did you not vote? 
to allow him to stay in office? I did. I don't. I don't. I, I let that up to the voters of his district. I voted to remove him as Speaker of the House. Marin says he wanted voters to have their say and Householder to have his day in court. Now he wants to push through ethics reform and guide the conservative agenda. He's not the speaker, but he wants to lead from the sideline. What's going to happen to have things, the supermajority of Republicans push forward a conservative agenda if the party itself is divided? What's the solution? Well, our block is over 40, 40 people out of 99 House representatives. It takes 50 votes for a bill to pass. So we have considerable influence on which bills pass and, you know, what we're willing to vote for, if, depending on how the bill likes. So, um, you know, I didn't, become, I didn't get my opportunity to become Speaker, but I have an obligation to stand up for Republicans in the state, to stand up for my colleagues that, you know, supported me, to do what's right by the people that I represent. And I'm staying and I'm fighting for what I believe in. I'm fighting for ethics reform. I'm fighting for lower taxes. I'm fighting for every child, no matter what zip code they live in. Um, so just because I didn't get the ultimate prize doesn't mean I'm going to take my ball and go home. I'm staying in this capital and I'm going to fight for what is right. Still to come, the householder verdict is expected this week, but there are some other big stories we're following from the cleanup in East Palestine to big changes proposed for education in Ohio. A look ahead when we come back. If you have student loans, care about education in Ohio, or the safety of trains that roll through your town, we are covering some stories this week that matter to you. Here's Matt Barnes. Billions of dollars in student loan relief for millions of borrowers is hanging in the balance at the Supreme Court. Justices heard arguments against President Biden's loan forgiveness plan. The U.S. solicitor representing the Biden administration says it falls in line with other pandemic era measures to protect Americans from financial catastrophe. The attorney representing six Republican led states argued that the issue does not fall under the criteria initially established by the HEROES Act. It could be several months before the justices reach a decision. A bill that would overhaul the Ohio Department of Education is heading to the House of Representatives after it passed the Senate on Wednesday. Senate Bill 1 would strip the state school board, including the superintendent of public instruction, of most of their powers and duties and instead hand them to a newly created Department of Education and Workforce. The bill's opponents say it stifles the voices of voters who elected a new slate of school board members in November. Supporters say the state's education system is long overdue for an overhaul. And the Ohio House passed several rail safety measures measures in the state's transportation budget this week. It comes nearly a month after a Norfolk Southern train carrying toxic chemicals derailed in East Palestine. The provisions in the budget include new requirements for wayside detectors and notifications, two person crews for freight trains or light engines and hazardous material reporting from the Public Utilities Commission of Ohio and the Ohio EPA. Those are three stories we're following for the spectrum. I'm Matt Barnes. The lawmakers and lobbyists are following the power struggle at the State House and the corruption trial of Larry Householder. Our experts weigh in when we come back. Welcome back. In our All Star Roundtable this week, we have with us from Common Cause Ohio, Sam Gresham and Mark Weaver, a Republican strategist. And we were talking earlier in this program about the Householder trial that should go to the jury this week. Closing arguments are set for Tuesday. Asking you first about this, Mark, this is your party. What a cloud this is hanging over the State House and over Republicans in Ohio. Yeah, this is unique to Larry Householder and Matt Borges. This is not about our party. There's been several Democrats convicted for public corruption in Ohio, but that's not about the Democratic Party. Uh, Larry Householder is going to find out what the jurors have to say this week, and the cross-examination he saw on Friday was particularly tough, and I think we're going to hear more about that when the jurors get interviewed. And Matt Borges didn't take the stand, but do you agree with that when he <coughs> says this isn't about the Republican Party? Because people are looking at this as a reflection of a pay to play system that appears to exist. I, 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 for all, uh, uh, a lot of reasons, I disagree with Mark. I think it is prevalent in the Republican Party, this issue over this period of time covers that. Yeah, the Democrats have had their issues, but right now it's the Republican Party who's having the issues. And furthermore, it is about 
play for pay. Now, we don't want to talk about the corrupt aspect of, of our democracy, which people do give elected officials money for favors. And it's hard to explain. You and I have talked about this. You're a, a trial attorney. It's hard to explain complicated issues like dark money to a jury. Do you think that might make this an uphill battle for the prosecution? Or is there enough evidence against Householder in this case? This is a very complicated case. I think the jury will take its time. But ultimately, I think they will find both Householder and Borges guilty. The uh, prosecutors here did a very good job. Remember, speaking of Republicans, this was brought under a Republican Justice Department. President Trump's Justice Department brought these charges. It's not about one party. These are two men on trial, and the jury will have their say. And, and we also want to talk about what's going on right now at the State House because we have this fight over who's leading the Republicans. The Republicans have this big supermajority, and they elected uh, a speaker with the help of Democrats. And there's another lawmaker who was on this program earlier, Derek Marin, who said, I'm the actual leader of the Republicans. So what do you think about all that, Sam? This power struggle, they should be getting a lot done, shouldn't they? Yeah, there's an axiom, which is absolute power corrupts absolutely. I think this is a good example of that, where Republicans have total control, and they end up fighting among themselves about that power and control. I, I, I think that's one of the aspects of the democratic process that discourages people because they see this all the time. And what do you think about how this is going to play out? Because the reality is they're not getting a lot done because each faction, here's the Democrats, here's these two groups of Republicans, and no one wants to give in to, to any of the other sides. There's a report card coming June 30th. We will look back on this session. We will see that major Republican laws were signed by Governor DeWine, put forth in the House and the Senate. There's a lot of talking right now, but there's a lot of work happening as well. And what, uh, what do you think will be the big takeaways from this agenda. I, you know, they were talking about, Derek Marin's talking about a 2.5% flat income tax. Is that something practical for Ohio? Yeah, I think, I think we may see a flatter income tax. I think most Ohioans would rather have a flat income tax. I think we'll see key education reform, which is going through the legislature right now. I think we'll see issues of criminal justice and public safety. A lot's going to get done. There's some talking happening, a lot of work happening, too. I see some things on criminal justice, but I don't see a 2.5% flat tax. I just don't see that. I don't think the corporate community would want that. I don't think people at home will understand it. And I don't think they want it either. All right. Well. I'm going to hold you right now here as we go to a break, but I want you to think about something. Language is going to be passed around about abortion in Ohio that could end up on the November ballot. We'll talk about that when we come back. Well, this week, the Attorney General Dave Yost approved language for petitions that will be circulating through the state of Ohio asking for the abortion issue to be on the ballot in November. Uh, this is something that that a lot of people are saying is going to get support in Ohio because as much as this is a conservative state, people want at least some choice, rape, incest, when it comes to abortion. Yeah, I think we'll see a lot of back and forth on this issue. People have strong opinions about it. The, what's going to go on the ballot looks pretty extreme to me. For example, people could abort a child who had Down syndrome simply for that reason under that particular bill. But a lot of people are going to have their say. And this is why the Supreme Court in Dobbs said, let's allow the states to decide. Ohio will have a chance to decide. And, Mark, and you have said to me in the past, Republicans should watch what they if they get what they hope for. Yeah, you and I, we, we were doing a show and Mike was here, Mike got and he was pushing for this and I said beware what you ask for Democrats liberals whatever you want to call us we're gonna ride this all the way to the uh, uh, presidential election in 2024 and it's gonna be a wedge issue that we're gonna use we prefer to call it a rallying cry and not a wedge issue but I, I think this is a series of issues I think the Republican Party is overreached in and will continue to reflect. They've lost all the general elections in this country with the exception of one. They have maintained a state 
But they're going to continue to have this problem. Uh, we've got to point out, though, before I let you both go, this is a Republican state now. It used to be the purple state. It's hard to argue that this is not a Republican state. It's been a red state for some time. Uh, all of our statewide Republicans are pro-life. People have elected them. This is a conservative state. People know that. All right. Well, we thank both of you for being with us. We thank you for being with us as well. We hope to see you next week on The Spectrum.